one softbox, one light shaping tool. 10 completely different photographs, understanding and controlling light quality and light quantity. And I'm gonna to try to show you 10 completely different things that you can do with that one softbox. You know, so much about photography is understanding control of highlights and shadows. And if you can learn those two things, along with light quality and light quantity, then everything else is pretty easy. Mastering the tools is critical. You've got to know how your tools operate. You've got to know what you can do with these tools. But with one softbox, there's so much work that you can do. And in a case like this, I need a big shiny surface, which is this black plexiglass table. I need a shiny object like this jewelry and be able to, with the distance of the softbox to the jewelry, be able to control this gorgeous, big, large, soft highlight. And in this case, pretty simple shot with one soft box, one piece of white poster board. And then my light, I'm using the, the Gemini 1000 Pro head from Bowens with the 100 by 140 soft box. And then it's got the built-in receiver for the pocket wizard. You know, on a shot like this, the first thing I wanna do is establish what my exposure is gonna be and where my main light's gonna reside. And for me, it's over the top of the product and just slightly back. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, I'm throwing shadows forward slightly. It gives me a higher impact picture and, and less flat picture. And then second, it also gives me the ability, by having it at a little bit of an angle, to shoot sort of down on it a little bit, which gives me the ability for the background of the shot that's reflected in the black plexiglass to be the front skin or the front translucent fabric of the softbox. So I'm lighting my product and I'm creating a background at the same time with the one softbox. So it works beautifully. That's the toughest part is getting that third dimension set up. Then bringing in the white card, the bounce card, right where you want it to where you fill in the shadows and bring around and kind of wrap that highlight down around underneath the side of the bracelet. I'll always meet her with the dome aimed straight at the softbox, straight up from the same plane that the subject's sitting on. And then I'll also meet her again toward the camera slightly, not exactly at the camera, but maybe split the difference, and just check my ratio and kind of see what the difference is. Then the placement of my camera is such that I can see exactly what I want in the background. In this case, my focal length was probably at about 100, maybe 130 at the most. And then my exposure, I was shooting right at 16. So that's what we were doing, and it worked out beautifully here. You've got two options when you do sort of a profile kind of a light. Uh, you've got a front profile and you've got a back profile. So, and, we're, and we'll look at both ways and we'll see which one we kind of like. What's interesting about this is I'm going to take a measurement and the light's going to be slightly past her coming back towards the camera, but very, very slightly. But there's an interesting thing that happens because of the angle. And that is if the meter reading says, I don't know, if it says 11, if I shoot at 11, it's going to be too bright. If I'm in, with the light coming into her face this way and measure f11, if I shoot at f11 and she looks like she's supposed to look. But if the light's kind of behind her coming back toward the camera and I measure to the light, that light's going to be a little bit brighter. So I always close down minus one stop from whatever the meter says. It, you'll find out that it just gives you a much, much cleaner, richer exposure. And this is a look that's really, really popular. And again, this is a great look for traditional portrait work, for photographing children for photographing brides. This is great for fashion. This is good for everything. And it requires one light. And it's really a nice light source. Working with one light is the key here. And Again, working with one light, and in this case, just a small white reflector, you can really make a great picture here. And, and it's, it's really funny that you can think about it this way. You can make a living with one light and one reflector. You can do amazing things with one light if you understand how that one light works. And that's what this whole series is about, being able to find all the unique things that you can do. This is just a typical beauty shot where I've got my main light up high, directly in line with the subject's nose. I don't want there to be a shadow going left or right from her nose. I want the shadow going straight down. So basically that light is directly in line with my lens and up at a 45 or so. And then that white reflector down below is just catching that and filling in the lower spots under the nose, under the chin, and under the eyes. 
It's that simple. But then I've got a smooth white wall that's my background that goes into a dark gray because I'm not lighting it. And it looks great. This is a picture that you can sell all day long and it's not a very difficult picture. And this is not about the difficulty level. It's about thinking it through as one of the options. And this is just another tool that goes in your back pocket. You can run into an executive's office and do the same picture on location and be out of somebody's office in 20 minutes. And that's what it's all about. If you have a home studio and you're working by yourself in particular and you don't have a lot of gear, this is an ideal setup because you don't have to have a lot of ceiling height. I just need to get above the model's nose with my light source and I can bump up against the ceiling in a home studio and be fine. It doesn't require a lot of space and that's the beauty of this. It requires a little bit of thinking. I just need some room to move and some distance between her and the background. The quality of this light is really, really flattering. And what it does, it really does smooth out imperfections in the skin. It does a great job with kind of enhancing cheekbones a little bit. The smaller the source, the more chiseled they become. Gabby's got great cheeks. She's got big, round, fun cheeks. And this light does a really nice job. It catches little highlights on her cheeks. But because of the size of the source, those highlights have detail and they're not blown out. They're not shiny looking. And that's the beauty of understanding size of source relative to its distance, because it does keep those highlights under control. One of the great benefits of the reflector is it, it just adds a little bit of density in the shadows. That's its only job. I'm not adding more light to the face. I'm changing my ratio from about a five or six to one ratio to about a three to one ratio. It's just a little bit more controlled. It still has a good solid direction to my main light, but I've got just a little bit more detail, if you will, in the shadows. And it just comes together well that way. It's not a very complicated picture. But again, it's one of many different things that you can do if all you have is just one light. You know, again, sim simplicity is the name here. And we're, we're doing one light portrait. We're doing all these multiple things that's possible with one light. And so one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that there's more and more movie posters being done with what we used to call monster lighting. Lighting from below, lighting like stage lighting used to be, where the footlights across the front of a stage would underlight the actors. And we used to always joke and say, you would never use monster lighting except in two instances. One is photographing someone on stage, and two, photographing someone sitting in front of a fireplace. Those are the only two places where this under light really are appropriate. But I'm seeing these movie posters over and over and I'm thinking, there's something here. So I started toying around with this a little bit. And I found that there is an angle on the face that looks really, really good when the light is down below coming up. So again, it's just another variation of the theme here. And it's one light, one softbox down on the ground, lighting right up underneath her face. And I'm gonna have my model bend forward very slightly and just work her neck and work her chin forward and do this below light. And you're gonna be surprised at how great it looks. Working with one softbox, there's a lot of different options that you have, and I was thinking about the one thing that was missing, and that is, why don't we just use the softbox as our background? So I got this idea to shoot this silhouette of Gabby. So we basically took a meter reading from Gabby to the box, and then I just closed down minus two stops. So I was reading F8, so I closed my aperture down to F16, and I got this killer, killer profile. The setup is pretty simple. You basically set them in front of the box, and pose them the way you want to pose them. And we basically had her hands come up slightly, brought her head around to one direction so I could get a good clean profile uh, in silhouette. You need to make sure that your exposure is rich enough and deep enough so the blacks go black. And in doing that, that also sort of assures that all the little small fibers and hairs aren't going to be eaten up with the exposure. You've, you've seen pictures that are, there's lights too bright from behind. Some people used to call that blowback and that blowback will eat into the fibers of hair and you'll lose detail in hair along the edges of ears and things and, and different things that just kind of lose the contrast and the details. But if you can close down from that, at minus two, I'm still getting a good, good crisp black and I'm getting a good clean white still. And all the detail is in her hair. You want a good clean neckline and you want good clean hairline. And if their clothes are bulky and not form-fitting, it's gonna be a lesser picture than it could be. 
you got to learn to play those distances and make sure that exposure is dead, dead on. We got this cool, cool picture. I ended up shooting it at about a 200 millimeter focal length so that that gave me that lens perspective to keep her within the edge of the box. So it worked out beautifully and it was a great exposure and a great capture. Pretty simple shot, but one that really has a lot of high impact. This picture is all about simplicity. This is a simple act of lighting my subject, getting her beautifully lit, nice light source, big quality, soft, soft box, in close, but then just pivoting it slightly and lighting up my background at the same time. It gives me the added option. It's real simple. Spin it past a little bit, look at it and see if you like it. And if you've got a background that's going a little dark and you don't have a second light, this is a simple way to do it. Just rotate that, let her go within the soft boxes area, she's basically second shot now. She's forward a little bit of the box and the back half of the box is light in the background. It's real simple and as long as I keep her lit about the same amount of the box, my exposure doesn't change. So the first shot I did, she's lit where the background is not lit. She's in the back third of the box. Well, in the last shot, she's in the front third of the box. So the exposure is exactly the same on her. But in the second shot, the background just appears to be about a stop and a half brighter. And that's all it is. It's real simple, but it's a way of adding a little bit of density in your backgrounds. For this shot, my light stand, my main light stand, is about 10 feet away from the wall, from that white wall in the background. So with no light on it, it goes into a dark, dark gray. But by pivoting that light around, lighting half of her with it and the other half to the background, that background density starts coming brighter and brighter and brighter. So at, at 10 feet, I've got nice, good density as long as I'm getting about half of that softbox lighting the wall. It's real simple to make it go darker by just pivoting that light back toward her again. The trick here is to keep her eyes and keep her face worked back into the light. So often you want to turn their subject, your subject's shoulders away from the light and bring their head back. But with no light or no second light or no reflector, it works a lot better to just kind of bring their shoulders back into the light source and bring their head over just a little bit and then just pivot it toward the background and you got a great second light and it didn't cost you a dime. In this shot, what I wanted to do was make our soft box a pretty deep distance away from the subject, but I still wanted the softness. So all I did was put a six foot by six foot translucent silk in front of the soft box, and it's probably five feet ahead of, five or six feet ahead of my soft box, maybe seven feet. Once that silk is in place, everything changes. The light quality just changed dramatically to a very, very large source, almost like a big, big bay window in your home. It's really a great source, and as you open up for the loss of light from the density of that second layer of fabric, it makes your background shift brighter as well. So everything gets a little bit brighter, and it really cleans up the shot really nicely. You know, I teach a lot of lighting workshops, and students ask me all the time, I can only buy one light, what should I buy? And my answer is almost always the same, buy the biggest thing you can afford in light shaping, because you can always make it smaller by blocking some of it off or by backing it up but you can't make it any bigger than it actually is. So this gives me the ability to make it bigger than it actually is. There's a remarkable difference between before and after with the softbox by itself at 10 or 12 feet versus when we drop in the six foot by six foot silk. Changes everything, changes the highlight, changes everything about this picture. Now, certainly it changes my light quantity, but I've taken a new meter reading for that. So as soon as I move the silk out and shoot just the softbox, I'll have to open up my exposure. So if you are working in a small studio especially, it's real easy to get a high key. Just make your light source bigger and bigger and bigger or add another layer of fabric. There is another way to do this if you don't have a six by six foot silk or a piece of translucent fabric that big. Get a sheet, grab a king size or a queen size sheet, but make sure it's white and stretch it across in front of your soft box, but not right against the soft box. It's gotta have some distance. So make it two, three, four, five feet in front of your soft box and let it drive through that fabric and you've done it. You've done the same thing that I've done right here.
You know, we talked about that six foot by six foot silk and how the ability that we have to increase the size of our source. If you don't have access to a silk or anything larger than your softbox, here's what you can always do. There's a white wall somewhere near you. There's one in your living room. There's one on the side of your studio. You've got one if you bounce a light into a large nine foot roll of white seamless paper. So you can always increase the size of your softbox by simply bouncing it. And in this case, all we're gonna do is pivot that light and just turn it right to the wall, which is gonna effectively triple, quadruple the size of my light source. And that light will power off of there with a great angle, 45 degree angle. We'll measure the effectiveness of it, we'll measure its output, and you're gonna see a spectacular picture with bounced soft light. In the before image, you're gonna see the main light it looks like it's a small, shiny source. It's a small, kind of a hard edge light source because it's a pretty far distance away from the subject. Then we're gonna rotate and just pivot that head around right into this wall and you're gonna see a dramatic difference. Now I've got much, much more direction to my light. The edge of the shadow is softer. The highlight is considerably larger and softer. And you'll notice this in the catch light too. We'll zoom in close here and show you this catch light and you're gonna see a remarkable difference in her eye. All of a sudden there's that, that catch light is so big and soft that there's actually detail in the highlight in the eye. You don't get that from a small source moved a long distance away from your subject. I think you'll find that if you learn to bounce lights off of large sources, you're going to see much, much higher light quality. One light, one soft box, and I've got to photograph a wine bottle, glass of wine, and make it sort of a beauty shot. The trick here is that I wanted to make the design element part of the picture with the soft box. So it can be done as long as you understand specular highlights and understand that this, the, what I like to think of as the efficiency of the surface to bounce light, the surface efficiency, or shiny black glass, shiny dark glass reflects perfect reflections. Well, with that in mind, I'm thinking, okay, so the only place I could really do a design element is at the highlight. So we just took black gaffer's tape and we just made a window by taping the front of the box and reflecting that into the wine bottle. So that gives us a little bit of a design. It makes it look a little bit different. Again, we're working with that same medium soft box we've been working with this whole thing and we're working with it really, really, really close. Because it's close, it's big enough to have detail in the highlight. Then on the right side of the set, there's just one white card. And that white card's job is only one thing, to give me a little small subtle highlight down the right edge of the bottle and the right edge of the wine glass. And I've go boat off the background just because it was a white wall that's, you know, 10 feet away, 12 feet away, and I want to make sure that it falls into a medium to dark gray. Um, that's the shot. So it's, again, it's a simple thing. Once you get it set up, it's one light. We took a meter reading by aiming the dome of the meter right at the light source, and we did exactly what the meter said, and here's our result. It's exactly what it should look like. It's a real simple thing, but again, one light setup is simple as long as you understand the concepts of working with one light. The goal is to take one light and light a group of people. I need to light five people, but I only have one light, and it's got to be off camera, and it's got to be directional. But how do you do that and have the exposure consistent from one end all the way to the far end and have them look the same without having to do a lot of fixing in post-production? And the trick to doing this and pulling this off in, the, in, a, in a good, easy manner is how you place that light source. That's the trick. And once you place this in such a way that you're skimming past her on the first edge all the way across to the last edge, then stuff starts to happen and this all kind of comes together and it works beautifully. So we're going to try this and see what happens. We've got the lovely, the talented Gabby. So here's the challenge that we've got today. What's fun about this shoot today, we don't have a group of people. And I had this idea for this, this group shot. Everybody's like, well, we don't have a group. Our executive producer said, can we just shoot the same person five times and composite her together? And I said, absolutely we can, but I'm not gonna move my camera and I don't wanna move that light and I'm not gonna change my exposure. 
So we'll take five meter readings. We're gonna have Gabby in five different places in five different outfits. And I'm just gonna check and make sure that she is the same exposure all the way across. Now I see composited pictures of cheerleaders, of football players, of high school seniors. You see composited pictures all the time, but they're bringing the, the model back to the same place every time. I'm gonna move her in different places all this time, but all the exposure is gonna be consistent all the way across this row. So this is traditionally where the light would be in a studio situation. If I'm gonna light a family, that's probably the way most people would do it. It lights over to 45 coming in on my group. But in this kind of a thing where I'm gonna have everybody lined up here, that position with only one light to my name, it's gonna miss. The exposure on her is gonna be at least a stop, stop and a half hotter than it is on that end. So what I'm talking about doing today is basically turning my light source horizontal, then I'm gonna rotate and just pivot it, and I'm just gonna keep going and keep going and keep going until it looks like it absolutely misses Gabby completely. Now it doesn't even look like it's gonna hit her. But she's gonna get plenty of light, and this is the thing that people miss. It's like, wait, it's not even aimed at her. Yes, it is. There's a sliver of light that I'm seeing that's this wide, so it's almost two feet wide that it's coming out. And the inside silver lining of this softbox, this 45 degree, is sending light this direction. So by the time now I take my meter readings here, 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 and here for all of Gabby's sisters with her, now I've got an even exposure all the way across. And that's the beauty of this. And this saves everybody lots and lots and lots of time in post-production. That's what it's all about. So let's take a couple of pictures. When you start out, you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of equipment, you certainly don't have a lot of know-how or knowledge or history of knowledge and know-how. And so what you do is you start practicing and practicing and practicing. What we tried to do with this is create a lot of different looks, 10 different looks with one tool. And guess what? They're all professional looking images. They're images that you could sell to clients. They're images that you can make money from and put this work on your website and get you more work. Folks, with one softbox, you can make a lot of money in your career.